All right, so the first thing that we want to do in our code to solve Newton's method for a function is make a script. So go to new script, and then we'll save it. We'll call it Newton's method square root 31 because that matches basically what we're trying to do. Um, the name of the function doesn't really matter as long as you don't start it with a number and you don't use any special characters besides underscore and no spaces. So all letters and numbers can't start with a number. Okay. So first thing, put the header in the code. So first we'll make our outline with comments and then we'll fill in the math underneath the comments. So the first thing we want to do is clear any extra junk. So this is just close all to close everything, clear to clear the workspace and CLC to clear the command window. Okay, so then to start like the actual solution part, first thing we want to do is define a tolerance. So the tolerance tells us how close to zero do we need to be to basically be done or solved the function. You know, do you need to, you won't ever be exactly zero pretty much, but, you know, is four decimal places to zero enough or, you know, 10 to the minus 17, like how close do you need to be? So we'll just say tolerance equals um, one times 10 to the minus five. Okay. Um, so that's, going to be our basically zero cutoff. So then we'll define our initial guess. And then we will calculate the function value. So basically, you know, what we want there. And then we will calculate the error. Um, so the function tells us how close we are to zero. Um, the, and it's a positive or negative value. The error, um, basically, if we're defining our tolerance be within plus or minus one times in the minus five, the error, the error is just going to be like the absolute value of that. So we'll just call that the error. We'll get to that as we type stuff in. Um, counting. Now let's just count the number of times through the loop um, so we know kind of how many it takes to solve. We'll say Okay, and then we will start a while loop to solve. So we want to solve this um, while the error is greater than the tolerance value. Now here, and then we'll put end and we'll put our math inside of there. So I use ERR for the error instead of typing out the whole word error because the whole word error is a word that MATLAB already knows. So we don't want to overwrite that. So just call it something else. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in here, so if the error is too great, then we need to calculate the derivative. So this would be um, the Jacobian if it's a matrix or um, F prime if it is a scalar. Um, and then we'll calculate the new guess. And then we will calculate the new function value. And then calculate the error. Okay, so we can also, um, we want to increment our loop count, so. Okay. 
And then um, if we want to, we can actually display the error or display uh, the answer. Okay. And then we'll just let ourselves know when we're done. So we'll just say, and we'll say that will be, okay. So that'll just make sure that our code ran all the way through. Um, if it gets stuck inside the while loop, that means that something's wrong. Either your initial guess was horrible or um, your derivative is wrong or something like that. Okay, so define our initial guess. We guessed that our initially x guess was 5.5. Then we calculate the function value. And so we'll say f equals x guess. We have to use the guess because that's um, what we have defined. x guess minus 31. So then we'll calculate the error and that will just be the absolute value of f. So here I'm using absolute value if f were a vector, as in it had multiple equations in it. Uh, maybe you have f1, f2, so on. You would instead you'll use the norm function, which is basically um, square root of f1 squared plus f2 squared plus f3 squared, so on. Pretty much you're just using the distance formula to find the magnitude of the error. Okay, so then loop count. How many iterations to solve? So we start out with loop count equals zero because we have not looped yet. All right, so now um, we get inside the while loop. So we can actually um, pause that there and run. Okay, and we can check, if we look over here in the workspace, but the font is kind of tiny. Um, we will say f 25 and a half, way too big. Ah, we need to put x squared. So we'll quit debugging. We'll run. What is f now? Negative 0.75. Okay, good. So that matches what we had before. So then calculating the function derivative, then we have j equals 2 times x underscore guess. And note that we are using the variable j, which is Jacobian or would be the multidimensional derivative form, rather than f prime, because you can't use a prime or an apostrophe in, in your variable name. Um, in MATLAB, it actually does something else. It switches rows and columns of a matrix, so you, want, you don't want to do that. So we'll just call it j here. Okay, and then we need to calculate the new guess. So x guess equals, uh, the new guess is the original guess, minus, um, we're going to go with j backslash f, because this works for any size of, um, whether it's a matrix or not. So if it's not a matrix, well, let's just say, Okay, so that works for a scalar, but if you're multiplying matrices um, or dividing by matrices, you have to use this actual backslash. Um, or you can say if J is matrix, you can use um, X guess equals X guess minus INV of J times F. So um, using the matrix inverse. Either way works. Now, this backslash works for everything. So that's why I'm just using it here. Um, it's more general, but, you know, if you know for sure if J is a scalar or if J is a matrix, you can do it one of these other two ways mentioned here. So then calculate the new function value. And so we can just copy this because it is the same equation and the error. We will copy that and increment the loop count. So now we will say loop count equals loop count plus one. 
Okay, so let's quit debugging and then let's just run and make sure that that actually worked and then we can actually display things. So I'll take away that breakpoint. Run, okay, it did finish and it tells us that our error, something to the minus seven, so that's good. F, also super tiny. Um, and then our X guess 5.5678. And so I think that's what we got before. So that's pretty good. So now we want to display things. Um, let's say we want to display each time through the loop what we're getting. So we will say answer equals string f and x equals, let's say we want x to nine decimal places, point percent. 0.9f and iterations equals percent i to make it an integer. And then we'll put x guess and count there. And then we will display it. Okay, so if we run this. Then we got through the two iterations, which we had showed zero, one, and two in our table. So X after first iteration, X after second iteration. Good. Now what happens if we change our tolerance? So maybe we want 10 to the minus 10 instead of 10 to the minus five. So let's see how that does. All right, so that took an extra iteration because we needed it to be more accurate. All right, and let's say we just wanted our tolerance to be 0 0.1, which is really not great, but there it just took one iteration. So we'll go back to um, one times 10 to the minus four. And then let's say that, so we'll run that, just get what we had, okay. So then let's say that we were stupid and didn't choose a good initial guess. So maybe instead of choosing in between um, five and a half, or between five and six, we're just like, oh, maybe it's 10, you know, which doesn't make any sense, but um, let's see what happens if we guess 10. Okay, so here the initial guess was bad. So it just took more iterations to get to the right answer. It actually took twice as long. Um, so you can see, and then after each one, it adjusted a little bit. So now what if we, guess that it was zero, that. Okay, that looks horrible. So we don't wanna do that maybe. What if X is negative two? Then um, it found a different root, which that's okay because what we found before was a positive root and this is a negative root and this is a parabola centered around the Y axis. So it's gonna have a positive and negative root and it is negative 5.5677. So there we go, that matches. So defining the initial guess, because this was symmetric around the y-axis, if we define the initial guess as a negative, it'll get the negative solution. And if we define the initial guess as positive, it'll get the positive solution because it is looking at the slope of the graph in that area to tell it which direction to go. So let's just put that right back to five to five, run that. All right, so that is it for how to do Newton's method to solve the roots of a system um, or of a single equation. And um, pretty much the code will be exactly the same for whatever uh, function you're trying to solve. The only thing that will change is the F and um, the Jacobian, the derivative. So just make sure that you put the right formulas in there for whatever equation that you are trying to solve.